Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Uh, this evening, Jacqueline Grant is training us on how to use LinkedIn Live to turn connections into clients. Uh, Jacqueline, by way of a little interview, I have got three questions for you. Hopefully, none of these will come as a surprise. Okay. The first question is this, what is your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment is actually caring for my mother the last year of her life, because that is when I put both feet on the same side of the fence of entrepreneurship when I was let go from being director of marketing of an HMO and uh, they were bought out by a larger HMO. And that was just when my mother was going to be coming home from the hospital after a long recuperation from major surgery. And I said, how am I going to take care of her when I, I was single at the time? And I said, how am I going to do this? How am I going to take care of her and work full time? And actually, when they let me go, that was the biggest favor they did for me because I decided right at that time to not look for another job and just take care of my mother and just do my business and give that my focus. And that was 2005. And I haven't worked for anyone as an employee since then. 2000, that's 16 years of entrepreneurship. Well done. Thank you so now, much. For us non-Americans, what does HMO stand for? Health management organization. Those are the organizations that do your insurance and give you the plans and the uh, networks of doctors and hospitals. So that's your insurance. Great. Question number two. Do you have a secret that you would be willing to share with us? My secret that I am more than willing to share with you is my passion outside of business is dancing. So it's not dancing, party dancing, but it's actually liturgical dancing. And what liturgical dancing is, is actually dancing out or acting out the words of hymns sung in church or when the choir is singing, the choir sings, but the dancers dance out the words and it gives another way for the audience to interpret the understanding of the words because some are visual learners, some are auditory learners, and it gives a way for everyone to take in the words and the message. I have never heard of, and that is called liturgical dancing. Liturgical dancing. So it's literally dancing out the words of the song. Wow. Okay, wonderful. Now, the third and last question. What item on your bucket list excites you the most? Actually, when COVID is all over and I can take a trip to Hawaii, that is my, my destination I would like to go where I've never been. And it's taking a little longer than I planned because of COVID, but that's where I would love to go and just sit on the beach. I'm a water person and just, uh, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm a water person and I would love to just sit and dream and plan what is next because that gives me inspiration. Well, that that that's a that's a real winner. Good for you. Uh, okay, message to participants. Uh, would you uh, please turn on your video because if Jacqueline is looking at a bunch of black empty boxes, it's hard for her to get energized. So help her out by coming on screen and letting her know there's a real person uh, behind that camera lens. Second question, please stay muted and type any questions you've got into the chat. During Jacqueline's presentation, I will batch the questions and pose them to Jacqueline in, in groups about every 10 minutes. Rest assured, you'll get your question answered. Now you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this uh, talk in a few hours, hopefully before my bedtime, I'm in Vancouver Pacific time tonight. But uh, nevertheless, I encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes is going to increase the information that you absorb and sometimes by much as much as 33%. Jacqueline, are you ready to knock our socks off? And maybe a few cabin socks as well, regular, regular socks and cabin socks for those of you who are in the cold, cold weather.
The stage is now yours for the next hour. Take it away. Thank you so very much. And I, I just want to thank you so much, Roger, for inviting me into your community. I am somewhat a part of the community from Iman and Collaborate, but uh, I appreciate being invited here to this community and bringing my knowledge of LinkedIn to you so that I can empower you to do even greater things than you're already doing. So hello and welcome to all of you. So let's get started. And, and again, as Roger said, I do love to be interactive. I do love to hear your questions and comments and how this applies to you. So I would love for you to really just think about, as I go through all this information, how does this apply to me? How does this apply to me? And you'll be able to really see some different ways of how I have been successful in utilizing LinkedIn. So what we're going to talk about is how to turn all those connections you have, may they be few or many, into clients using LinkedIn Live. And this is hot, new, off the presses, latest information for 2022. So let's talk about what we're going to go through in this brief time that we have together. Because granted, an hour is a long time, but there's lots to LinkedIn, and I only have but so much time to share with you. So we're going to talk about who will benefit, why should you even listen to me, What's my promise to you? Where's the proof? Because I practice what I teach. And three elements of what I call the LLL, as you see in the bottom corner, launching LinkedIn Lives. And I'll do a little bit of a demonstration with you. And I will have a special invitation for you at the end if you would like to learn further and to maybe work with me directly. And of course, we'll have a Q&A. And I know the way Roger operates, there may be Q&As throughout the presentation. So I'm happy to have him interject with your questions as well. So who will benefit? This is for you if you are an experienced mid-career professional, if you're a corporate worker, especially a corporate worker who's looking to transition into entrepreneurship. It's for all you coaches and consultants and advisors out there. Anyone, has, uh, anyone who has a level of expertise, this is for you. And especially, especially for new entrepreneurs who have been in business less than five years. Now, if you've been in business more than five years, this is applicable to you as well because things do change very quickly. And they've changed a little bit over the last two years too, right? So this is for you if you want to have freedom and peace of having consistency of your income. So you're not having the highs and lows and the dips along the way and having a weekly flow of pre-qualified LinkedIn clients who want and need what you have to offer. The ones who raise their hand and say they want to work with you. The ones that you don't have to run after and chase after and convince them how great you are and go through all those motions that we really just don't like to do. How many of you out there don't like being spammy? Please help me, Roger, let me know what's happening in the chat. I can't see the chat right now, but how many of you, if you would just uh, put a one in the chat box, how many of you have either felt spammy working with a client or trying to work with a client, a target customer that you know you can serve, or maybe you've been on the receiving end of that spammy message? Put a one if you felt uncomfortable, put a two if you've been on the receiving end of that spammy message and put a one and a two if you've been both. <laughs> what are we seeing, Roger? You got um, you got 21s and you're on your way to getting 32s. Wow, okay. Thank you so much for your participation. I really appreciate that. Helps me to know who I'm speaking with and how to really address your particular needs. So why should you even listen to me? Well, I will share this with you. I get 90% of my business through LinkedIn. And how is that? I am really just passionate about empowering others to better use LinkedIn because of what I've done and how I've used it. I remember when I took my business totally online in 2017 and I developed an easy and replicable way, a system to be able to transition what would happen in a successful in-person experience, networking and transition that into a successful online experience 
again, we are 90% of my business now comes through LinkedIn. And again, that was 2017 when I did that way before COVID, but I've actually been able to help a lot of people to make that transition as well, because now we're all on LinkedIn and we're all virtual and we're all utilizing technology a lot more. But I knew I was really onto something when I now really support a lot of entrepreneurs to help them to attract and to authentically, authentically engage with their target audience, again, without being spammy, using the power of their free, free, yes, I said free, free LinkedIn account. I do this with no paid ads and no sales at navigator. If you're familiar with spending money on paid ads, this is not where you're going to have that as a resource for you or one of my tips or techniques. If you spent money on Sales Navigator and you maybe had a huge learning curve trying to figure it out and make it work for you, that's not one of my strategies either. Usually when I start out and I say, I do this with your free LinkedIn account, they say, oh, it must be paid ads. I don't wanna spend money on ads. I don't either. That's why I practice what I teach and I show you how to do what I did with no paid ads, no Sales Navigator. And I've used my unique strategies uh, in ways that are very, very different from what most of the LinkedIn gurus out there are doing. Because for me, it's much, much more than just having a pretty profile, a nice about section, a nice picture. Sure, those things are important, but that's not what really makes the difference to be strategic and differentiate yourself from everyone else out there. So you see on the screen some of the companies that I've been affiliated with, either trained for them or trained some of their employees directly, where their employees came directly to me, or I went into the corporate set, set, setting and be able to do training for them on site. Can't so can't yes. can't. you're not displaying your slides right now. No. No. Let's go back. I gave you all that juicy information and no one saw it. We all did. We all saw it straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Let's see. And it was beautifully delivered. How about now? Yep, perfect. Now we oh. see you and your screen. Well done. All righty. So here we are. I apologize for that. So sorry. But uh now you can see what I was sharing with you just a few minutes ago. And uh, I want to just give you a little bit of background. I know Roger was so gracious in sharing my bio with me, but oftentimes people don't go through reading all of that. And so I just want to share directly with you what other people have said in relation to my strategies of utilizing LinkedIn. So this is one of my favorite clients. All of them are my favorite, but this one is, is very near and dear to my heart because he's a true visionary who took a chance to dream big, do something that no one else in his industry was doing. And he is seeing his vision come to life. And he's really just so happy about it because what he actually says is, when I meet with Jacqueline on Thursdays at nine o'clock every week, it's my best day of the week. That's what he has said to me. And he, he actually, floored me when he sent me this recommendation where he was referring me to someone else, where literally I was so shocked and surprised because I wasn't expecting this. And he sent this referral email and basically said, you can read it for yourself, but he said that he wouldn't be where he is today in his business without my help. And that basically anything I turn turns to gold. So I, I, I feel a little funny saying that because it, it, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but this is just a real passion person who is taking his industry to new levels by going outside of the box and doing something different. So why I share this with you is because I know many of you out there have a vision, a dream, a passion, an idea to do something different. And you may be a little hesitant to share it with other people because they'll say, you're crazy. Why would you even try to do that? No one's gonna take on that idea, but that idea was given to you. And if it hasn't gone away, if it hasn't 
dissipated in you, if you haven't uh, gotten shiny object syndrome and gone on to something else, it's for a reason and a purpose. And when you go after your gifts, your gifts will make room for you. Your gifts will make room for you and you will find opportunities to share your gift and your vision and it will come to pass. I wanna share with you about Kathy. Kathy is a coach and a consultant much like you and I. And she said, I belong to a few masterminds and I know how powerful LinkedIn is and people are afraid of it because they just don't know the many, many ways to utilize it. And she said, because of Jacqueline's background, she makes it simple, clear and efficient. I am a project manager. If you're familiar with what that is, could you raise your hand or give me a little something in the, in the chat? You may have said, how many of you in the recent months have said, I'm working on a project? Who has said, I'm working on a project? That term gets thrown around a lot, but there is something called formal project management, which is all about having a globally recognized methodology and system. It's the same methodology that puts up multi-story skyscrapers as it is to plan a family vacation. It's a systematic way so things don't fall through the cracks and it improves processes and procedures. Why? To save time and save money. How many of you would like to save time and money out there? Absolutely, absolutely. You don't want to waste time. And one thing that Kathy knows is that she's a productivity and systems consultant, but she still was able to see value in what LinkedIn could do for her. And another coach has also said that she's shocked that she didn't notice it in her own stuff. The things that I gave her, the tips and strategies that I gave her, she didn't see it in her own information, but yet she coaches people on some of the same topics and techniques. So sometimes you just need another person, those fresh eyes to see what you do not see on a daily basis because you're too close to it. So I will have a little question towards the end of this presentation. So I want you to really pay attention to what you've seen in these three people. I'll go back very quickly. What's important about what Luke said? what's important about what Kathy said, and what's important about what Donna said. And I'll have a hint for you later on, and I'll have a little bit of a surprise and a prize for you if you answer, if you were the first to answer my little question. So let's keep moving forward. So what is my promise? So imagine, just think back and think about what it would be like if you had your own LinkedIn live show just as you imagined, just as you thought it would be the outcomes that you dreamed of. And you just finished interviewing your dream target customer. Yes, they said yes to being on your show. And you breathe a sigh of relief and gratitude as they thank you for the opportunity to share their expertise with your audience. They're thanking you. And they ask if they can introduce you to their colleague who could use your service because now they've gotten to know you a bit and they want to introduce you to someone. And you have also direct messages from your viewers flowing into your inbox asking to meet with you because they want to do business with you. And what about if you knew exactly what to say and how to say it to collaborate with them and close the deal because sometimes we are very good at what we're do what we're doing but what to say how to say it, especially on linkedin some people may be a little hesitant and you know how to systematically generate three or more streams of income for your show how many of you would like that that's always the key as to how to be able to monetize what you're doing. We're passionate about it. Sometimes we would say we do it for free, but if you're in business, you are in business to make a difference and to support yourself because when you can support yourself, then you can support others. So here's some proof for you. So it's not just my word. 
but here's what some others have said. Here's Tippy, and this email was actually just from last night, and I met with her via phone just last evening. And she said, thank you. For the past two years, I've spent time focusing on the wrong things, the wrong target market, the wrong skills of my abilities. And in our 20 minute conversation, I gained so much clarity. She's now focused. It's as if you were going to do some painting in your house and you leaned the ladder against the wrong wall. You're in the right vicinity, but you're in the wrong area. I helped to give her some focus and now she's on track. Other proof, this is Ellen. And Ellen said that after working with me in some other areas of, of her business, she will now be able to hire us to, I'll be able to hire her to be able to do a LinkedIn Live program. So this is her saying to me in an email that, she wants to be able to do a LinkedIn Life program based on some of the other things that we did to prepare her and to position her to be able to have a great program. So we can do all of this without, again, those paid ads, without those sales navigator bots, and without being spammy. But what do you have? You have the ability to really just be you. And that's what I really love about LinkedIn because there are no real rules. You can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and share what you want to share. And as long as you are doing it in a certain way, people will naturally be attracted to you. But what often causes the hesitation is not knowing what to do and how to do it, what to say and how to say it. You'll know what to do without feeling that there's scarcity. And you'll be free to explore and create knowing that you will attract your ideal clients. What's really important to me is that I've always been able to explore and make money from anything that interested me. My mother was in the fashion industry and I did some modeling in my early years. And I also was a makeup artist then, and I'm sharing this to say that I was interested in those things and I wound up showing other people who wanted to know how to do those things and earning income in it. So I want to encourage you that the things that you're interested in are your natural gifts and talents and abilities. And there are likely people who want to know what you take for granted as, oh, it's just so easy, it comes so easily to me. Doesn't everyone know how to do that? No, that's why it's your gift, but a gift is not really a gift until it is given. And that doesn't always mean given for free because again, we are in business, but when you position yourself to be able to share your gift with the world, then your gifts will make room for you. And you can be free to explore all different types of things, all different types of talents. And I utilize my LinkedIn Live show to connect with great people, to be able to network in ways all around the country, all around the world that allows me to really have a broader network of opportunity, not just directly with those people, but then they share me with others. They share me with others. How I actually uh, came to be here with you through Roger is again, through, I talked about the Collaborate community. Uh, a few months ago, I was at one of the Collaborate events and I was a contestant on the shark attack. How many of you are familiar with the shark attack? So I took my chance of being on shark attack, doing something new and different, and I set an intention, and I actually was the only contestant where all seven sharks took me up on my offer. I was amazed, but it was a wonderful experience and it stretched me and it allowed me to, again, just have the confidence to do new and different things. So I'm sharing that to just say, LinkedIn is where you can connect with any and everybody and having your show gives you an opportunity to have a platform where you can showcase your credibility, your expertise and your authority and you have something of value that other people want and need, no matter how 
popular they may be, no matter how famous they may be, everyone wants a new platform for exposure. And don't think that just because your show may be new or that it is uh, you know, just starting out, that it doesn't have value, it does. How many of you have at least 100 people as connections? Great. How many of you have at least 500 people as connections? Great. How many of you have over 1,000 people as connections? Wonderful. So you have a network of people that you can already have a touch point with, have opportunity to connect and share and grow. And it's all about how you tap into that network and how you treat that network, but it's also about having the right people in your network. What's the right people? Whoever is right for you. Who is your target audience, your, your avatar? Who is the ideal person that you would like to be in connection with? Likewise, you also want to take note as to how many of those people are really part of your ideal audience. Because if you are writing to them, you're posting, and they aren't responsive, maybe they just aren't the right people. But we'll talk about that more in a moment. So I want to share with you my three elements for experts on LinkedIn and doing a LinkedIn Live. It's starting with the setup. How many of you saw, what was it, the last, uh, the two ships that went into space with uh, Michael Strahan and all the other people who went into space for a few hours, I guess it was? Uh, that was just a short moment in time. They were only up there for, I don't know, a few minutes or a few hours. But what went into that launch and being up there for that short period of time? There was a lot of planning a lot of going through details. There was a lot in the setup that made that launch a success. It's more than just the launch. It's all what goes into it before, during, and after. It's all about the process and having a process to be able to make sure you have a good setup. It's the foundation of everything. The audience. Consistency is key. Being in touch with your audience is important to be able to develop the know, like, and trust factors. How many of you, if you would put into the chat for me, know about the, have heard about the know, like, and trust factor, where you have to develop a way of letting them get to know you and you get to know them, getting them to hopefully like you, and developing trust, which is the toughest part, developing that trust. And the way to do that is through consistency. What is consistency? Whatever is consistent for you. It doesn't mean that you need to be out there having your show or your posts every day or every other day, but whatever is consistent for you. That sometimes put a lot of pressure on people as far as feeling that they have to do something a certain amount of times per week. Whatever is manageable for you, is what is consistent for you because you want the longevity, not just the short-term benefit, but the long-term benefit because everyone is looking for that consistency to determine if they want to know more or to do business with you. They want to see your track record over time. And the third element is about the income. It's all about having a consistent flow of income from multiple sources to be able to make sure that you are well supported in your business so that you can support those who you serve in your business. Let's uh, stop and see if there's any questions so far, Roger. Uh, there is a grand total of one question, and that question is from Ada. And the question is, what prompted you to get into project management? Well, that's a great question. Thank you, Ada. Um, I was actually in grad school during the time of the last big recession, 2008, 2010, in that area. And I was in a cohort of 28 people, and I was the only entrepreneur in the class. And I thought business school was where people went to school to, to partner up with other people, share ideas, start businesses. Everyone else there was a corporate worker, nothing against that, but their companies were paying for them to, so that they could get a promotion, a raise, and so forth. But I was the only entrepreneur in the class. 
So I decided to transfer because the direction where they were going as a cohort was not where I wanted to go as an entrepreneur. And I figured out that I could serve X number of people with the strategies and systems that I developed on my own. I could, I could serve X number of people on my own. And I said, there has to be some other way for me to scale and expand this without losing the quality that I've developed. And that's when I discovered formal project management because it's a systematic way of running any kind of personal or professional project to be able to have it run more efficiently, more effectively, saving time and saving money. And it applies to all business types and all industries. So the, the creative person that I am, it, it gave me a lot of breath to be able to work with a lot of different industries as opposed to just one niche or one type of industry. So I knew that that was for me because it allowed me to be creative and being a process-oriented problem solver, a process-oriented problem solver. Thanks, Jacqueline. Jason mm -hmm. has asked, where do you go on LinkedIn to set up LinkedIn Live? That is one of the questions that I get asked very often. I can provide you with the link later on uh, towards the end, uh, once I'm out of the slides to give you a link. But if you do a Google search on LinkedIn broadcast license, you'll get a link to be able to fill out the application. But filling out the application is one thing. There is much more to it that they don't tell you. And that's part of what I'm here to share with you today is some of the things that they don't tell you, but you do need to know. And that's where people sometimes get frustrated because they think it's just one thing and it winds up being a few other steps and they're a little surprised. So that is the short answer is that you can do a Google search for LinkedIn Lives uh, broadcaster's license and you'll be able to fill out the application. No further questions, back to you. All righty, thank you. So let me now share with you my strategic process for having full circle success with LinkedIn Lives. Why I call it full circle service is actually what I alluded to in, in the last question in that I got very frustrated and tired when I needed a resource or an answer. And I found someone who said they were the answer or could help me to solve my question or my issue. And when I purchased that program or that whatever it was, then they said, and now you need this. And now you need this, and now you need this. And when you thought you were there, you find that you always had something else that you had to pay for, you had to purchase, you had to get. How many of you have experienced that? If you could put a, a two in the chat box for me, if you have experienced those uh, half-baked opportunities. Jacqueline, you're getting lots and lots of twos. Um, it, it has occurred to me that you haven't exactly said what LinkedIn Live is, and maybe we're leaving some of our participants behind. Oh, it's a coming, it's a coming, but I will share that with you right now since you asked, Roger. LinkedIn Live is a live streaming opportunity on LinkedIn. It is a free service to your free LinkedIn account. And it allows you to, in essence, be the star of your own show. That show can be a talk show of just yourself. It can be a panel related type of show. It can be an interview show where you interview one or many people at a time. It can be a demonstration type of show. It can be a how to type of show. Whatever you can create, whatever vision you have, you can do it on LinkedIn with your LinkedIn Live. But what I do want to share is that it is different than Facebook Lives or Instagram Lives or any other, other live streaming opportunities out there because it is still maintained as a business platform for business information, business related information. Now that doesn't mean it can't be fun, doesn't mean it can't be entertaining, but it's just different. And I actually have had a client who said, I've had some success on Facebook, but I know my clients are on LinkedIn. I just don't know 
how to talk to them. I don't know how to operate on LinkedIn. I don't have a LinkedIn voice is what she said. And I helped her to find her LinkedIn voice. And she started doing more live streams, more postings. And she actually was able to expand her business. And she now has her product in three retail locations and in her state capital building. So by expanding her opportunities with LinkedIn and doing LinkedIn Lives, she expanded the interaction with the people that she was already engaging with, and she brought in new people into her world that wanted and needed what she had to offer. And the great thing about it is that she didn't have to go chasing people down. They raised their hand because of what they saw and approached her. How many would really like that? Not having to chase people down, but having the right people to come to you. Can I get a four in the chat box for that one? The fours are coming in. Thank you. All righty. Thank you very much for your response. I really do appreciate that. You got, so a, few, that, you got a few amens as well. Okay, okay. Well, let me give you my three-step process that is easily repeatable, but it is systematic. So number one is the launch pad, getting started. Number two is the velvet rope. Now what's the velvet rope? It's about having the right people in your right sphere of influence who can refer you also to the right people who can also introduce you to your ideal clients. So it's not just the one-to-one -one direct relationship, which is great, but also strategically looking at the people who also have your target audience in their world, in their sphere of influence, with their connections as well. And why is it a velvet rope? It's because we selectively choose who we want to have on the show, who we want to have in our pool of people that we, we do business with because we want to be efficient, we want to be effective, and we want to be able to save time and save money and make the most of the opportunities that we have. So that velvet rope is about being selective of the right people, not just any people. And again, we're not, we're not saying that anyone is not a good candidate, but again, how many of you have spent time and energy with people who were not necessarily your ideal client. And when we say ideal, not just in age or demographic, but also ability to pay. You've put in a lot of effort and then they say, well, this is great. I'd really like to work with you, but I can't afford your fees. How many times has that happened? Put a six in the chat, in the chat for me, please. Oh, here come the sixes. Okay. okay, so I've been where you are and that's why I bring this full circle service because I give my clients everything they need to succeed. I don't hold back with, oh, just buy this and now you need this and now you need this and now you need this and I, I just don't like that gotcha. I feel like I'm duped if I, if I experience that. So that's what the bel velvet rope is in a nutshell. And of course, we only have but so much time, so I want to make sure that I go through this and share with you what is next is the seven streams of income. So how many of you would like to have seven or more streams of income from your LinkedIn Live show? This is important. What's I'm the gonna... number you'd like? What's, no... What's the number for the chat? Let's do an eight on this one. All right. Oh, here. Oh, my goodness. It's just chat has gone crazy. All right. Back to you, Jacqueline. All righty. So I am going to give you a snippet of what you can do to have multiple streams of income related to LinkedIn Live. So you pretty much said that based on your response in the chat. But my question was going to be based on number one, two or three, which ones would you like me to do the deeper dive on? If you can share with me one, two, or three, just so that we confirm, make sure everybody's participating. Which one would you like me to do the deeper dive on? One, two, or three? Just to back up, three is the streams of income. Two is the velvet rope, picking the right people. And one is getting started. 
So far, three is the winner. Okay, so let's talk about three. When you invite the right guest, and I want to have you put in your notes right in capital letters, big capital letters. If you're typing, put it in all caps and bold it. Choosing the right people for your show not only draws new people to your show that become familiar with you and your products and services, but now that guest who is your ideal target audience person also now gets to know you on a deeper level. You've done something great for them. You've invited them onto a new platform. You've exposed them to a new audience. And that audience and that opportunity is not just for the day of your show. It goes on into what they call perpetuity. It's out there forever. And whatever they do, whoever is interested could see it next week, next month, next year, and beyond. That opportunity is out there forever. So I want you to see that as valuable. It is quite valuable. So your guest and who you choose is significant. So that is one way to have a stream of income because they could become your client, but they can also expose you to other people who could be your client. Jacqueline? Yes. Shock is asking, how do you know who is right? Well, that is a question that is going to have a different answer for every person because it's going to depend on your avatar, your business, who you really enjoy working with, and your business type. So that would be something I would be happy to talk with you on one-on-one uh, -on -one to be able to give you some more clarity on that. And you know that would be my, my gift to you just to be able to do that. But um, that answer would be different for every person. Thank you. Back to you. Okay. All right, so let's talk about a second way is through the viewers. Now, when you do a live stream, it is live when you actually do it, but it is staying on your LinkedIn profile forever, unless you take it off. So you have your initial viewers, but you also have the opportunity for other people to see your show and your content and your topics that may not already know you. So through the stream, through the feed, they may come across your information, but there are other strategies to get new viewers as well. We just don't have time for today to go through those detailed strategies, but there are ways to utilize the viewers that you already have in your network, but also to get new viewers. Number three is guest referrals. Remember the example I gave you a few slides ago where because of the conversation I had before, remember the setup, before the actual live stream, I meet with all of my guests. And for me personally, it doesn't have to be with you, but for me personally, all of my guests are LinkedIn connections of mine. So I already have a point of connection with them and it, uh, it gives me the opportunity to get to know them better and for them to get to know me better. And when they know more about me and I know more about them, the know, like, and trust factor just goes through the roof. And when you do something nice for someone, you give them an opportunity, exposure, human nature typically, not always, but typically is a reciprocal type of, uh, relationship where if they feel warm and fuzzy about working with you, they'll want to likely do something nice and warm and fuzzy for you and introduce you to someone if there's a connection, something that comes up top of mind that they feel would be, be a good connection point, they may share you with someone who wants and needs what you have to offer. Now, it doesn't always happen. It's not a tit for tat. But when you put out good energy, when you put out good vibes, when you put out good energy, it comes back to you one way, shape, or form. And you, when you are known for doing good in the world, the good will come back to you. So having your guest as a possible opportunity as being a client, the viewers, as well as the guest referrals are just three of, I put seven, but I actually have a lot more than just seven to be able to have different streams of income. Just to give you one little tip, I did a show called 
Coffee with Jackie. And I created this mug with a couple of my different logos of my different programs and my different uh, offerings and so forth. And how many of you like to do challenges? Challenges were very big since the pandemic. I did a little challenge and I gave that as a prize. And so you can do all kinds of things to create engagement and develop that know, like, and trust factor with not only your current audience, but developing new people, the right people that will be supportive of you. Even if they are not a direct customer, if they know someone who wants and needs what you have to offer, they will make that referral. And just like Luke in the beginning, he made that referral to me. He sent that email to me and my mouth was on the floor because I, I was just so in awe of what he shared. You will get those types of referrals as well. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, Ashok, your question is ambiguous. Could you, uh, could you unmute and ask it directly? When you say you communicate with the right person, how do you communicate? You prefer to communicate through text message, by phone call, or through a LinkedIn message? Good question. Thank you so much. So my, one of my big strategies is to connect with someone on LinkedIn who I genuinely want to connect with. It's not just about having a big number next to your name, but it's about connecting again with the right people. So when I connect with someone, I actually send them a message thanking them for connecting with me. And if I was the one who made the invitation to connect, I here's, here's a bombshell. I actually read their LinkedIn profile. I find out things that we might have in common. You would be surprised how many people send messages, connection requests. They're just looking for a number. They don't even read what is in the person's profile. I get so many bot related, and when I say bot, robotic messages that say, oh, we can help you with your LinkedIn profile. Obviously you haven't read my profile <laughs> because that's what I do. So you want to make sure that you're connecting with the right person on LinkedIn first, but then inviting them to have a Zoom call or a phone call or whatever is your preference. You might even want to give that person the option to be able to select what might be best for them. Uh, I usually offer a Zoom call first because it, again, gives another layer of being personable. And when you can look into someone's eyes and see their features and their body language as much as possible in these little boxes that we're in, it gives a new and higher layer of connectivity than just um, a phone call. But a phone call is still good if that's the preference of the parties. But you want to take it off LinkedIn as quickly as possible to, again, have a better layer of connectivity. I hope that answers your question. Ashok, are you good? Let's assume the answer is yes. Carry on, Jack. All righty. So I just want to kind of bring this full circle. And I'm showing you the power of LinkedIn and what it can do for you outside of what everyone else talks about. Everyone talks about how many times to do your live stream and, and how long it needs to be. And sure, I cover all of those things, but that's what everyone else is doing. I show you how to differentiate yourself, stand out from the crowd, and that's what's going to get you noticed. So again, just think back, think in your, in your mind, sitting back in your chair, what it would really, really be like if you interviewed that person who, is on your dream list. You might be saying right now, well, why would they want to be on my little show? They're here and I'm just starting out. You wouldn't believe how many people want the opportunity for new exposure to new audiences, no matter how big or small they may be. And all it takes is an ask, knowing what to say and how to say it. You'll be surprised how many times you'll get a yes. If you get a no, you, you didn't have, a, you didn't have a, a, an opportunity to begin with. So why not take the chance and go after asking to interview someone who is on your dream list? And when you are able to really get that dream person or persons, I would suggest you make a list of people, 
And you get that first one, it just gives you the energy and the momentum to get the next one and the next one and the next one. And this is where it all gets rolling. So imagine that you have that ideal person and they are appreciative of you bringing them on your show. And they're referring people to you and people are messaging you. Uh, another point I want to make related to LinkedIn, don't be disappointed by small numbers on the front end. If you're doing what you're passionate about and you're connecting with people and developing those business relationships, they're writing to you on the back end directly through LinkedIn Messenger or directly through your email. LinkedIn is not like Facebook where it's all about the likes and showcasing how many things you like. Remember, the people who you are looking to contact don't necessarily want their colleagues, their competitors, or other people to know what they're interested in, what their strategies are that they're developing, what kind of help and assistance that they're getting, what type of business services they're getting. They don't want the public to know that. Understand that. I hope that, is that an aha to anyone? Why, why numbers might be a little bit low on LinkedIn? What are we saying, Roger? Um, we're not, no responses. Oh, we've got a, got a, got a one yes. Okay. Well, one of the things I hear very frequently is that I don't get a lot of engagement. That was one of the, the comments that uh, was said earlier, is that I don't get a lot of comments, but they're watching on the back end. I can tell you, I've had so many clients that, in essence, come out of the woodwork and say, I'm ready to work with you. And I say, well, why now? Why is, we, haven't, we haven't talked in a little bit. Why now? They say, I've been watching you. I've been watching you. I see the things that you post about. I see the people you interview. I see all the summits that you're on. I see the different things that you're doing. And I knew when I was ready, you were the one. So they're always watching. Don't worry about low numbers on the front end. Jack, Jack yes. I got uh, six questions. So uh, given the time, uh, you need to be tight on your responses. Hey, okay. asks, what are some examples of daily online activities that can be monetized? And I'm not sure this question is beyond the scope of your talk. Well, I'll give you a short answer is the fact, again, going back to consistency, engaging with the audience. Here's a tip for you. Any and everyone who likes or comments on your post, whether it's a static post or a video post or whenever you do your LinkedIn Live, respond to each person. That will increase your Google juice, meaning your analytics for Google, but also your analytics for LinkedIn. And it will give you more exposure because no matter how many people are in your LinkedIn community, when you make a post, it doesn't go to the entire community. It goes to a smaller subset. So the more engagement you do, the more reach you will get. A shock has created a scenario. The profile looks very attractive but they don't have a phone number in their contact information. What do you infer from such a profile? Well, it could be a number of different things. Maybe they just don't know any better. And I'm not being uh, you know, negative in saying that. Those are some of the things when I do a LinkedIn profile audit, I go through and check for certain things. And if that person wants to have more engagement, have more people contacting them, that is one of the things you want to have in place, unless there is some specific reason they don't want to be contacted in that particular method. Vast majority of women don't want to give a phone number for obvious reasons. Well, you can also get a Google phone number, which is not your, I definitely don't recommend putting your own personal mobile number or, or home number, but you can have a Google phone number that is separate and, and totally for that use on LinkedIn, as well as an email address. I have a an email address that is specifically for LinkedIn. So any correspondence I get through that, I know is through LinkedIn. Uh, Scott is asking an interesting question. Uh, this sounds like your very own business radio show. Jacqueline, could you compare and contrast LinkedIn Live with a business radio show? 
very much the same. You are the host, you are the producer, you're the chief engineer, you can definitely get VAs or other people to help you, but it's all about your creative juices and what you want to have happen on your particular show without any constraints of anyone else, quote, telling you what you should or should not do. This is your vision, your passion. You innately know what your audience needs because you are serving that particular audience and you likely were a part of that audience. So you have experience with what their pain points are, what their needs are, what their likes are. And so you can definitely serve that audience best. I can remember when I was working for a company and, and I worked for a uh, a financial newspaper in the Wall Street area. You can figure out what they were. But uh, I worked for this financial newspaper and uh, one of the things I did was ads, bank related ads, financial institution ads for mergers and acquisitions in the newspaper. I met a client and they said, beyond just the ad, you really helped us to develop a strategy from start to finish to really make an impact beyond just having an ad. He called up his, his uh, partner right in front of me and said, I have Jacqueline here with me and she looks like she really knows what she's doing. I want to ask her to help us with our marketing strategy, not just buying an ad. So I knew that I had something when I provided additional service to people. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. You can just do what you know needs to be done, not just what is supposed to be done. You don't have to lock yourself in that box anymore. Carrie is asking, is LinkedIn Live basically a podcast style feature of LinkedIn? Yes and no, in that, what do you call a podcast? Originally, a podcast was just audio. Now, podcasts technically are video-based as well. Any of the series that are on YouTube or Facebook, those are all considered podcasts. There's a series of information. But what I can share with you, because I'm, I'm what is called a LinkedIn advisor, so LinkedIn actually asks me uh, my opinion on features that they are considering to let out to the population at large ahead of time to get feedback. And one thing I can share with you that's coming down the pipeline is an audio version of LinkedIn Lives. And it's like a clubhouse style audio-based version and they, that's going to be coming out in the spring. And there's also going to be a video-based version of that particular platform as well. So the best way to position for those things that are coming up, remember the setup, that was number one, is positioning yourself now so that you can get approved for the things that are coming down the pipeline. So when you are set and positioned for success with the right things in place, knowing who you want to be in front of, how to speak with them, you are able to get approved for things that other people aren't. Allison asks, I own multiple businesses. Should I create several? I believe she means LinkedIn accounts. That's cumbersome. What do you advise? Well, here's this. You have one LinkedIn account for you personally. And because of that personal LinkedIn page, you can have a business page. A business page can only be created by a person. So you have to have a personal page in order to create a business page. So those are the two that you can have. It's not allowed to have multiple personal pages. That's against LinkedIn's terms and conditions. If you do have multiple, eventually they'll find it and shut them down. So you want to be in line with the terms and conditions. And there are certain things that you can do on your personal page that you can't do on your business page. And there are things that you can do on your business page that you can't do on your personal page. So for me, as I do training on LinkedIn, people think, well, I'll just look at your profile and copy it and I'll make it my own. But that isn't necessarily going to work because I too have multiple businesses and I develop my page based on my clients and what they will respond to. It's different for every person. Paige is asking, what are some examples of daily online activities that can be monetized? You, again, wasn't that a question we answered earlier? 
I, I, th I think so. Yes, beg your pardon. <laughs> no worries. Um, David's question, I have always been curious about how to make the best use of LinkedIn because I worry about competitors or recruiters exploiting the information that's available to my network. Can you comment on ways to navigate or mitigate this? I love that question. I have given thought to that as well. Those were concerns of mine as well, but I overcame it by this. Number one, what is for you is for you. Who's attracted to you? is going to be attracted to you, not just because of what you do, but for who you are. And as you share on LinkedIn, it doesn't mean it has to be extra super personal, but as you share about yourself, your, your perspectives, your philosophies, why you do what you do, how you do business, how you create quality in your business, all the things that are important to you as a business owner, those things will draw the people who want that. Those who are takers and, and competitors who are just looking to copy and steal and so forth, that's happened to me and maybe some of you as well. But the thing about it is, it's not going to work the same way for them. It's not going to work the same way for them and they will just be spinning their wheels because you can take copy that someone else uses and copy it and tweak it for your own use and it won't work for your audience because your audience knows your voice. And when you start copying from other people, they know that's not you. George, Jacob, you ask if I can send you a copy of the chat too. Uh, the three, go to the bottom right corner of the chat and you'll three, see three dots. Click on those three dots. One gives you the option to make a copy of what's in the chat. Next question for, uh, from Jason. Should you contact people on LinkedIn with person or business? That's the literal question. Should you contact people on LinkedIn with person or business? I interpret that to mean for personal reasons or business reasons. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, well, if that is the question, let me just say that LinkedIn is not a dating site. It is a professional platform. So please don't use it as a dating site. It is not like LinkedIn or um, it is not like Facebook or some of the other platforms. And you, you, you may get your account shut down for doing things like that if, if the receiver complains. Jacqueline, about how much more content do you have in minutes? Two. Two minutes, because we've got 18 questions waiting for you in the chat. Okay. Uh, so why don't you complete your content and then we'll double back and answer the questions in the chat. Back to you. Okay. Thank you so much, Roger. And thank you everyone for your questions. Keep them coming. So just to kind of wrap up, we help you take action again with that setup. That setup of not just the application to get your LinkedIn broadcaster's license, but all the other things that go into play to be able to position yourself to get approved and to be able to have a great show that is of interest and how to determine what your audience really wants to see from you. It's all of those things that go into the setup and not just starting the show, but having the show be consistent over time, having the right audience, the right people who are not only in your LinkedIn connections, but who you're inviting onto the show, who those people have in their audience that could also be your clients and how to expand your audience as well as the income, making sure that you have multiple ways and not depending on any one resource as your source of income from your LinkedIn live show or your business as a whole. How many of you have seen commercials where it's the person who's doing the show that has a commercial break and talks about their own product or service. You have all rights to do that. I want you to think creatively. Look at your favorite TV shows. If you watch late night TV or any other type of TV, you now are the producer of your show and things that draw you or you find interesting, incorporate them into your show. Be creative. So what makes us different? is that again it's more than just a pretty profile it's about being strategic it's about putting processes and procedures in place that are easily replicated so that you can do it with your eyes closed it's about building those business relationships it's not about dating sites it's not about 
uh, anything inappropriate. It's about building those business relationships. It's more than just having a big number next to your name because how many of those people do you actually know? And I don't just mean physically in person, but have you had a phone conversation with them or a Zoom call with them? Those are points of contact that will develop that know, like, and trust factor. We help you to get those results, building on the skills, accountability, and mentorship that we provide. And we have a bonus that includes a client generating LinkedIn profile audit. I want to ask you, this, these are the questions that I had from earlier on. What is the income stream that LinkedIn Live can be used for when we looked at Luke's testimonial. First person to put it into the chat correctly will get a free LinkedIn profile audit from me. Give it a second. Are we getting some responses, Roger? Turns everything into gold from Virginia. Any others? Painting from uh, IJ. Uh, Alice wants you to repeat the question. There was an income stream that was listed in Luke's testimonial. And I'm looking for that income stream for his LinkedIn Live. And it wasn't painting. No, it wasn't painting. IJ, try again. Two more seconds and then I'll tell the answer. Golden Nuggets from Virginia. Being top of mind from Allison. Shawnice, course development. Shawnice is the winner, yeah! Sorry, sorry. Um, Leanne actually had course development ahead of Shawnice. Okay, so, so Leanne tell me what. No losers here, we'll do both of them. We'll do both of them. Um, if you could just make sure I get their information. Roger, if possible, uh, course development was the answer. So how many of you would think that course development is something you could do related to LinkedIn Live? I hope that was an aha moment for you. All of you who are course developers, who have products and services, courses that you want to provide, you can use LinkedIn Live to be able to do that. I'll give you one more. And then what? Well, well, can the two winners uh, type their contact information into the chat? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. So last one, what was Donna shocked about in her testimonial? If you remember Donna, what was she shocked about? There's Leanne's contact information. And Jason's answer is how easy it was. Okay. Harry, it was easy. Engagement from Virginia. Okay, keep it coming. What did Donna say that was surprised that she was shocked about? I'm going to have to go back and look at the video. How simple it was from Jason. From Carrie, it was stuff she's already had in her LinkedIn. There you go. There That's you from go. Carrie. Carrie Deal, D I E A D L. Carrie, please type your contact information in the chat. Donna talked about how she provided some of these services to her clients, but she didn't see it in her own in her own material that she needed these certain adjustments. So, why I want to share that with you is because it's all about certain mistakes that we make because we're too close to our own information. They try to figure it out on their own and you waste time and you waste money. You waste money on paid ads that don't work and you waste time trying to connect with people through automated bots that everyone knows what they are and they don't respond. So when you can develop those genuine business relationships, it's about quality versus quantity quality versus quantity. So what I want to share with you is my opportunity to give back to this community by 
offering you an opportunity to get more handholding, more support, and speed you towards the success that you're looking for without spending time and money trying to figure it out on your own. It's only 197. We use online modules in a Slack channel, and we have weekly live support where you can get all the questions that you didn't get to ask, or maybe you hadn't thought of yet, and you can get your answers individually each week as you go through the program. Whatever questions you have, we have an hour together to not only answer your questions, but also hear the questions of others that will likely either be a question you have as well, or maybe down the road might be a question for you. We start next Wednesday, and you don't yet have to be approved with your LinkedIn broadcaster's license to participate. We can help you get ready for that because, again, it is a license. You have to apply for it, and they will be looking for certain things in your application. That's one of the things they don't tell you what they're looking for, but I know what they're looking for, and I've helped others to get their license as well. We have a seven-day risk-free guarantee so that you can take a look at the program and participate in one of the live support sessions so you can get a feel for everything and be able to know that you've made a right decision. And your next step is really just to contact me. This is my email address to be able to be sent the payment link or if you have any additional questions about the program. It's called launching your LinkedIn Live and it's more than just getting started but how to maintain and how to have that consistency as well as the income on a regular basis, doing what you love, having fun, being creative, and not having to chase people down, but have them raise their hand and reach out to you to work with you. So with that, I'd like to give it back to Roger for any additional questions. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Scott has asked, is the, uh, do you guarantee getting the license with the $197? I cannot guarantee that because that is not in my hands. I don't have the authority to approve or deny any anyone, but what I can do is position you as best as possible based on your business type, your industry, your LinkedIn profile to position you as best as possible to be able to be approved. But I cannot, I cannot uh, guarantee something that I don't have a hand in. Okay, uh, so the earlier questions are so far up in the chat now that if you still have a question that is unanswered, please ask it again in the chat right now. Bhavna wants to know, what are quality connections on LinkedIn? Who would be best to get connected on LinkedIn? What is important quality or quantity of connections on LinkedIn? Well, that's again going to be different for every person, but I would like that person to give us a little detail as to what is their business or industry, and then I can be a little more specific for you. Bhavna, would you like to unmute and uh, give Jacqueline the information she's asked for? Yes, sure. I'm a business coach. So I'm wondering, you know, if it is entrepreneurs to be connected with, or is it uh, more that could be, you know, let's say marketing or other businesses like that, that might be, uh, that might support, you know, the entrepreneur. So who, what kind of, just as a business coach, what kind of, uh, yeah, what kind of connections would you suggest? Okay, so when you say business coach, that's that's a little broad. Is there a specific uh, type of person you like to work with or a specific type of business or some area of business? Is it those who are starting up or those who are well-established? Give me an idea of your avatar, who you love to work with. Those who are well-established but mm -hmm. are struggling to scale up or are struggling during the time of pandemic uh, to either be online, you know, they might have had the business for 10, 20 years, but mm -hmm. now they're struggling to just have that online presence. So those, those are my clients. Okay, so one thing that you would want to do is 
go through what I have as a, an avatar exercise where you're going through a lot of details about who your ideal person is. You may not have all the answers of what they like, what they do, where they go, all those details, but for those items that you don't know specifically, you can take a best guess as to where that person might like to spend their time. And when you go through the details of that avatar exercise, it will allow you to know when your right person is right in front of you because you will know so much about them. So for your particular type of business, I would recommend looking at where they live, work, and play. What are their challenges and how do they seek them out? So you want to be in connection with who they need before they need you. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So all those people who are in touch with them before they need you are who you need to connect with and partner with because then they can be referral partners because they are already in touch with those people. Great, great. Can you throw out a couple of suggestions? Uh, we got quite a few more questions. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll give you one quick one. So let's say if your person, it sounds like your person is, is uh, in business for several years, so they probably are a little bit affluent. So let's say that they play golf, if that is the case. If they play golf, where would you find a person who loves to play golf that is a business owner? Where else would they go? What types of restaurants? What, you know, outside of COVID, where would they go? Where do they shop? What kinds of things do they do? How many kids do they have? Where Are they soccer people, soccer moms, soccer dads, all those kinds of things. And you touch those points, you can get in contact with those people where they are not having their guard up that they're going to get spammed with all kinds of spammy messages. You'll be part of their organization, their community, whatever it might be, so that they consider you a friend that they know, like, and trust. Great. Thank you so much, Jack. You're welcome. You're welcome. Leanne asks, does LinkedIn Live integrate with Zoom? Absolutely. Couldn't happen without Zoom. <laughs> yes. Shanice asks, how is LinkedIn Live different from Instagram or Facebook Live? From a technical standpoint, it's not much different. It's that the platform that it's actually on, you know, LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram. But the terms and conditions, the things that you're allowed to do or not do is different, but also the platforms themselves have different personalities. LinkedIn is a business related platform, a networking platform for professionals. Whereas Facebook is more social. That doesn't mean that business isn't done on Facebook, but I will share this very important tip with you. The higher ticket price your product or service, the more you need to be on LinkedIn because the people who are making those business decisions to purchase high ticket items, thousands of dollars at a time for a course, a program, a service, the ones who can afford it, the ones who are making the decisions to purchase it for themselves or their department or their division or their company, the ones who are making the authorizations for those purchases, they're on LinkedIn. There are 800 million professionals on LinkedIn. No matter who your target audience is, your target person is on LinkedIn. It's just about finding them, connecting with them, developing the no like and trust factor without being spammy, without connecting with them and immediately sending, this is what I do and blah, 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 blah. No one wants to hear that. And if you're doing that because you've seen others do that, that doesn't mean it was right because what was the response rate from that? If you're not getting a lot of responses because it's too soon, you have to develop the relationship first. You have to develop some type of camaraderie first. And when you are other focused, when you are interested in the other person and you're curious about the other person and what they do and how they do it and things that you have in, in, uh, in common, the question will ultimately come back around to, so what do you do? and there is your opportunity to share. Jason wants to know, is the license for your business page or professional, or sorry, is the license for your business page or personal page? For your personal page. Personal for you page. Personally. Mm -hmm. Should now, you now you can, when you do a LinkedIn Live, you can also post it to your business, but it's coming from your personal. 
Should you contact people for your show from your business page or your personal profile page? Depending on your strategy, you could do either one. Depends on where you have the bigger following or where that person knows you from. If they only know you from your business page, then go where you're familiar. LinkedIn folks, asks Suzanne, LinkedIn folks prefer information that inspires, directly impacts their personal career goals. One, one Facebook, the, sorry, there's no question there. Can LinkedIn Live be connected to YouTube to get all the views? To, I, I understood the first part. I'm not sure about the second part about getting views because you get views wherever you post it. So when you initiate in LinkedIn for your LinkedIn Live, you can post it to Facebook, you can post it to LinkedIn, I'm sorry, uh, YouTube, you can post it anywhere you want because it creates a link. So you can post it multiple places. And that's one of the ways that you can get greater exposure. Okay. Uh, can you do a LinkedIn Live similar to a Facebook Live launch for our product or services? Absolutely. And one of the great ways that you can utilize LinkedIn in conjunction, again, remember I talked about that full circle approach? You can use your free LinkedIn account, which is your setup, number one, to get the right audience of people through your LinkedIn connections, the connections of those who are on your show as your guest and who they are also connected to, as well as doing LinkedIn events, which is something separate and different. But you combine LinkedIn lives with LinkedIn events, that's a one-two punch for success. Wonderful. We've caught up on all the questions, so I'm going to take this opportunity to thank you to the moon and back, Jacqueline. You've taken a massively complex topic and really distilled it down to its essentials. On behalf of EIN's 82,000 members, we thank you hugely. I thank you so much, Roger, and thank you to the community, all of you who have been here asking great questions, giving thought to how this applies to you and your business. I'm here, you have my email address. If you have further questions, if you have questions related to the LinkedIn, launching LinkedIn Live program or any other as aspect of LinkedIn, I'm happy to collaborate with you, happy to answer questions for you and be of service to you because you're a special group to me, again, through Iman, and collaborate. I love this community and thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you my passion of LinkedIn.